actual natural birth. So you wonder what, what makes people, what makes Jewish people want to go into the settlements? Well, some of them are, it's, a, it's religion. They truly believe that it's their mission in life to save or redeem the land of Israel. And so they're uh, a religious fundamentalist, Jewish religious fundamentalist. But a lot of them are there for financial reasons. And this is your tax dollar. A, a, a Jew who will move to Palestine and live in Palestine uh, gets permanent exemption from real estate taxes and employment taxes. They get a grant for moving costs into the settlement from anywhere in the world. They get loans for paying rents and utilities or purchasing apartments and homes. And the loans turn into grants if they stay three years. They get a free education from kindergarten to university. They get scholarships for technical school, and there's any special budgets. But by law, these incentives are only available to Jewish settlers. They're in Palestine, occupied Palestine, but this, these laws certainly don't apply to Palestinians. Israel outposts, Israeli outposts take up about 2% of what remains of Palestine. And so here's uh, what an outpost might look like. I heard a lot about outposts from the students because they would describe how uh, Israeli would pull trailers in the middle of their orchards and they might get up one morning and see these Jewish trailers and uh, suddenly uh, the military was there to protect the, the trailers and the next thing I knew uh, the trailers were connected to the water and it wasn't long before uh, their, their land was gone. Israeli land cultivation takes up 1.8% of the West Bank. And this would be land cultivation. This is in uh, the Jordan Valley, beautiful, beautiful agricultural land. It's almost 100% taken over by Israel. Palestinians are very few, other than Jericho are there. 75% of the West Bank of irrigation water is distributed to the 5,000 Jewish settlers in the Jordan Valley, and 25% of their own irrigation is distributed to the 2 million Palestinians uh, in the West Bank. Israel does sell Palestinian water back to them. 21% uh, of the West Bank is taken up by closed military zones. And this is a closed military zone, it's very obvious, it has a sign that looks like a military zone, looks like the one out that we have out in the West Desert. Um, you would not want to know that thing. But this is also a closed military zone. This is near the village of Jeyus, and it's an area where uh, Israel is building their wall. At this time, they were building their wall. And so they're uprooting huge trees. These are five, probably 500 year old olive trees. Israel will uh, take these into Israel proper and replant them. But the important thing here is it's a closed military zone, but there's no signs, there's no indication, but it gives Israel permission to attack the Palestinians who are demonstrating. Because after all, well, you know, it's against the law to go into a closed military zone. Israeli declared nature reserves take up 8.7%. And again, these are for the benefit of Jews only. Palestinians can't use them, can't go on. They were formerly uh, raising land for uh, like sheep or probably goats there. This is a Jewish settlement in the middle of the nature reserve. It's beautiful. Private highway system for Jews only. It only takes up 4% of the West Bank. But what's important for you to know is that Palestinians cannot use these roads and they cannot cross these roads. So a Palestinian surrounded by these roads is sort of sort of jailed in their own little enclave. And this is really what divides the West Bank up into enclaves. Here's uh, 
uh, I'm not sure what the, the village is, but I took this picture in 2003, and you can see the Palestinian village on the hill. You know, the foreground here is one of these Jewish-only roads. It goes back to a Jewish settlement. The settlers live in the settlement in the West Bank at night. They take this road into Israel proper, work in Israel during the day, and they'll take this road back out of Israel and into the West Bank at night. But Palestinians, you could see the little road, the little kind of a dirt road going up to that village that now is a useless road for them. When I was at this particular spot, uh, we stopped and took pictures, and there was a little Palestinian, very old Palestinian, looked old Palestinian lady with a donkey. She had the donkey piled high with, with uh, something, I'm not sure what. And she just stood there. She was on the opposite side, and it looked to me like she really wanted to go up to this village. But she was on the wrong side of this Jews only road. And there were soldiers there. And she just stood there, and we were there maybe 15 or 20 minutes, and I, it seemed like there was a standoff there between her and the soldiers. And so I asked, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen? Are, you know, are they going to do something going to happen? And they said, she will do nothing. She will just stand there until they go home for the day. And then she'll cross that road, and she'll go up to her village. And I thought of our Rosa Parks and uh, our fight for rights here in the U.S. These dots indicate uh, checkpoints and, and uh, roadblocks and so forth. By September 2008, Israel had established over 688 restrictions to Palestinian movement. And here's just a few. It's, uh, Palestinians don't drive from one end of occupied Palestine to another. They drive four miles, leave the car, get out, climb over rocks and boulders, get on another road, get a taxi, go to the next place. That's, that's how they live. This is the checkpoint. And then there's the wall. I'm sure you've heard of the wall. I don't know how many of you have seen pictures of it. This might be like my image on the left is distorted. But anyway, the wall takes up about 10.2% of the West Bank. A lot of it has been built and it goes deep into the West Bank. You can see from the red uh, there that the solid red 